along with Richard Ote. Yo, Richie, happy Friday. It is that time. One more time. Podcast day. I love it. Podcast day, and we get a merchant online today. Yeah. Yeah, we had a couple, we haven't had a merchant in a little bit, so I think we're kind of jonesing to, you know, talk to a merchant and get, get their, you know, view of the world and offer our two cents when, you know, when requested. Yeah, <laughs> Real, I mean, it's our favorite thing to do. We're not, we hear each other talk enough, plenty. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired of you. I've, I've heard your voice plenty, you know. But, but this is, even when we're just doing our own show and we don't have a merchant, we're always trying to help the merchants, but we get extra excited because there's just so many different ways to make it be a successful business. And, you know, Equid makes that pretty easy. And, you know, we talked a couple weeks ago, too, about what you should sell. And part of what we love about talking to the merchants is just about the time you think you've seen all the things you can sell yeah find another one and we found another one yeah this one uh and and by the way on the internet there's a couple things that always win cats dogs you know so i think we're kind of playing to playing to the favorites here so we have uh our guest today makes uh custom fit dog coats and accessories so uh let's hear from let's hear from the owner jill bartlett scouterwear.com how are you I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Great to have you on the show, Jill. Thanks. Yeah, Jill. So we'd love to hear all about how you got going with Scouterware and, and kind of hear your full story. But with the name Scouterware and being dog coats and accessories, I have to imagine there's a scout somewhere. <laughs> there is, yeah. Scout is a, is a lovely little porty doodle. She's lying peacefully beside me right now. Let's hope she stays that way. <laughs> she is a rescue dog from the, the BC chapter of the uh, SPCA. And uh, she came from a puppy mill, which was uh, shut down here in, uh, in Vancouver, Lower Mainland. Uh, and um, pu- puppy mills, just in case anybody doesn't know what they are, they're, they're places that are uh, really, really bad, bad breeding practices, and uh, they just literally pump out the puppies, and they don't care what, how they get raised. So that's a short background, but anyways, the SPCA shut down the puppy mill, and, uh, and I was lucky enough to get Scout. All right. So, uh, yeah, she's a, she's a lovely little porty doodle, which is a Portuguese water dog and a, and a poodle mix. And, uh, um, uh, so yeah, I was just, I, I tried to get dog coats for her. Uh, they typically don't fit her body shape. Uh, she's very tall and lanky. She's got the long legs of a, of a poodle, but, uh, um, she's skinny and she's long. And so, Nothing really fit her. Plus, I just found that the stuff that I was finding in the the local big box stores here were just real crap. And uh, so I started making dog coats for her. We live in, uh, I live in Vancouver, uh, BC, Canada, and it is torrentially rainy. It is just horrible out there today. And (laughs) this is typical for our winters. We just get rain and it doesn't stop for about two months. So uh, I needed some raincoats for, for Scout. So I started making them. And, you know, in the neighborhood... You know, I would walk by, people kept asking me, where did you get that coat? Where did you get that coat? So I decided to go out and get myself some labels to sew into my coats and uh, started a website, and and the rest is history. It's, it's, it's just gone really well. So so were you already a seamstress, or was this something that, because you love the <laughs> dog, you just thought, I'm going to try to make a dog coat? I... Yeah, I no, I'm not a professional seamstress. Uh, I when I was a little kid, I used to make clothing for my for my dolls and for my teddy bears. And uh, so I started sewing when I was really young. I took sewing in high school, and I've just always sewed. Uh, but I've not I'm not a professional sewer. And um, I yeah, I just started sewing these things. And um, I, I'm a perfectionist, and that's kind of why I think the quality of the coat stands up because I can't stand things that aren't well made. So I make them really, really well. And yeah, I, yeah. W- I would, ha- I would hate to see the, the standards you would put on me if I tried to make one of these, cause they'd look <laughs> like a professional seamstress. <laughs> this does not look like uh, anything I would put out. This is a very, very good looking product here. Yeah. I'd, Jill, I'd yeah. say you're a professional now. I mean, you're, you're 
essentially you're sewing and you're getting paid, so that's professional, I would say. And, and from looking at the quality on the website, I can tell these are very well made, um, you know, the lucky dogs out there. <laughs> so you, uh, thanks. Yes. You, you had your dog, you started to solve a need, you, you have cold winters and dog needed some clothes, you took your skill set, people started asking you, you put a label in, you said, ah, I think I'm going to start a business. And so what was it? Was it uh, at a certain number, you know, the 12th person and, you know, the 100th person? What, what number made you all of a sudden realize, wow, I, I, I think I can actually turn this into a business? Uh, good question. I think, well, what happened is as soon as I decided to kind of hang my shingle out there, I... I went to a market and uh, I was doing the market actually because I was doing jewelry as well. I, I thought I'll just put a few dog coats on the side and, and it was a market in my local neighborhood here and I got 10 orders right then and there. So I, I thought I need to I need to make this into a business. That was kind of the, the starting point. Um, and I come from a background of of doing websites and doing e-learning and I felt that, you know, you kind of have to have a website to be a professional company. So, you know, business cards, website, that just seemed to me it was, it, you had to have it. So I started the website almost immediately uh, after I got my first 10 orders. And uh, yeah, and the e-commerce, it just came, it, that was part and parcel. I, I needed to have e-commerce. I wanted to be able to have the ability for people to buy online. So we're, when you first went to this market, did um, you already have these coats made or did you just have a few on Scout and they saw that and you said, I will make them to order or were they just picking, I want that one or I want that one? Yeah, I just, I just had a couple of coats, uh, examples of what I make and then uh, pre-measure people, uh, not people, <laughs> pre-measure their dogs. Uh, for the coat and and to make sure that they they custom fit the dog, and that's become my little niche area is the custom fitting um, and fitting dogs that just have a real hard time fitting into normal everyday coats that you can buy at a store. Yeah, one of the things I want to point out real quick to listeners right now is if you can hear one common theme that Jill has, regardless of whether it was the sewing or the making websites is she's taking action. She has an idea and she seems to take action like right after that idea. And it's, it's really cool because it's not that often that you run into a perfectionist that also is taking actions in so many different areas without that being perfected yet, right? So you, you really seem like you have a good mix of understanding um, – Noticing when people are noticing, right, i.e. people talking to you saying, hey, where'd you get that? Um, taking action on making the actual gear, taking action on getting your website together because you're saying, hey, I want to do this professionally. I want to look professional, so I got to get a website going. And you also foreshadowed, hey, I can see or I can get this in front of more people if I also take this online. And so... It's just, I really want people to start thinking about that, that it wasn't like you were sitting there watching Shark Tank and said, I'm going to, I'm going to start making these. Like you just started solving problems in the world and it started with your dog and now you got a business. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, fa it's exactly. fantastic. And I, uh, I am a perfectionist, but I tend to just kind of jump in two feet too. She hasn't always been, worked out well for me, but this has gone well so far, so. <laughs> well, the good news is there's, as you probably already noticed, there's always something you can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like, uh, and yeah, uh, to, to kind of amplify Rich's point there, a couple things is you had the product, and a lot of times people will think about a product for months, years, but you made it, and you went to a market, and turns out it's sold. So there's your proof of concept. Like, yeah, I made a couple of them. You didn't spend tens of thousands of dollars. You, you know, you spent time and effort and, you know, I, I know there's costs involved, but you made it, people were buying it. And then you immediately said, 
I'm going to get a website. You know, it wasn't like you'd sold 500 of these. You sold 10, you know, maybe a few more, and it was ready to build a website. So awesome. Hope people are listening, thinking, yeah, just take action. Get started on this. Um, so I want to yeah. dive a little bit more. And this, it's easy. Go ahead. I was just saying, and it's easy to do. It's, you know, there's just so many simple processes with yeah. the, the equid and everything, you know. It's just... It's easy to do. So that's, yeah, my suggestion is definitely just jump in and do it. Yeah, I, I love it. Get out there and do it. Um, you know, my I always try to close with make it happen. Like, uh, you know, like, yeah, you just went and made it happen. And so I want to dive a little bit more onto the website because um, that's, I mean, it's the equity commerce show here. So um, you yeah. said <laughs> you, you started with a, a site. Is it the same site you have now? Uh, yes, it is. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I started off right away doing the site on um, with the Equid uh, software and with the plugin, and I used WordPress as the the backbone of the like the actual place where I built the site. Got it. Yeah, I, I saw it was WordPress. I was remarking to Rich earlier that it's like it's a very nice, clean site. So for people um, that are, if you're driving and you can't pull up scouterware.com, uh, it's you know mostly like a white background, which looks very nice and clean. Um, and then when you, if you have a white background, if you have white background on the photos, it also, it just kind of blends together very nicely. Um, you have a lot of sections in there. So um, it, did, it looks like there was a theme as well. So did you kind of plug in a theme and then plug in Equid? Is that what you did? Yeah, I actually use a software called Thrive Themes, um, which they provide a bunch of different themes and you can go in and uh, alter them and it's a real it's a awesome program for just drag and drop um, you don't have to be technically savvy so it works really well to create the theme and and uh, yeah it's a great it's a, it's great software to start from for sure awesome so yeah for people listening uh, you know like if you're thinking how do I make my site a little bit better uh, I think this is a very good example of of a good looking site that probably didn't take that long either. Like you know, and and Jill, you mentioned you did it yourself. Um, is the, have you built? You you mentioned you built websites before. You know, like how many websites have you built prior to this? Uh, several, probably seventy or so, sixty, seventy. Hard to say. I, I've come from a really a corporate background. Okay. I did. Um, I, became, I had an e-learning company for several years, and so did a lot of e-learning development and uh, training. And in that process, we did a lot of websites as well, um, just to, in order to host the e-learning and such. So I've done a lot of websites and a lot of back uh, technical, um, kind of technical in the technical realm of things too. Got it. Well, it shows then. I, I so <laughs> yeah, def definitely shows, okay. and I think that can be helpful for other people that, you know, like you can see where you can take something. And um, since you're from the e-learning process as well, you, you know that if you have a question, you can probably Google it and find the answer for it. So. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything's out there. Yeah. Amazing. Yep. Go, go watch a little YouTube video on it and you'll probably figure out how to do it in a few minutes. So, um, so good. Well, let's talk about, so you got the site set up. Looks great. Now, how did you go about finding customers? What did you, you know? How did you market this product? Uh, primarily, what I'm doing is uh, on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, that is definitely where I am not as strong and need to put much more of my energies into is the social media. Um, as I say, I've got I've got a good local following and. Uh, because I get, I've got it in stores, retail stores. I get a lot of customer orders out of that. Markets I do as well, and just the local neighborhood and word of mouth. Uh, that's gone really well in, in Vancouver. But I'm trying to really build the company outside of the my local area, and that's something I really need to need to brush up on. Well, even though you are fantastic at doing the seamstress and you know how to build websites. Now that you're taking on this new adventure of the world of social media and getting out there and actually marketing, um, you don't have to share, don't share. But are you going to try to take on all this yourself, or you plan on? Do you plan on outsourcing some of the seamstress work, or because there's only 24 hours in a day, and I'm already <laughs> blown away at what you're doing. And the more you sell, the more you're going to have to sew. 
Yeah, well, I've got a couple of plans for that. Uh, I do have some local uh, seamstresses that are that I'm starting to train and, and show how to do things, how to do my products. And what I started doing for that was creating uh, PDFs, patterns, and then I started developing some actual tutorial videos. And what I've decided out of that, kind of playing on my e-learning background too, is that I'm going to actually start selling the how to make my stuff. So it's a whole new kind of, this is a, an area that's going to be launching probably by the end of February. But um, yeah, so I'm hoping out of that, my plan for that is also to find some people that are really good seamstresses that want to make products and actually sell them on the site. So that's another avenue I'm, I'm moving into. So that's... Fantastic, by the way. I love hearing that for two reasons. One, again, we're hearing this common theme of you're bringing in your skill sets from your past and applying them to your current endeavor. That's one. Um, but more, um, well, in addition to that, not more important, but in addition to that, I love this idea of doing the E, uh, bringing in the E learning and showing people how to do it for two reasons. One, when you start to get into this marketing world a little bit more, you're going to start to see one of the things that works best is just going on to social and adding value right out of the gate. So here I am. I'm documenting the process. You know, you may or may not have the whole thing. You might just go live and start showing one. And, and people who are watching that video or had have watched that video in the past, you can actually remarket too. Now we'll go into a little bit more depth on that, but um, these people, they might be interested, but here's the good news. They, if they are interested and they want to make it, what happens sometimes? They realize, oh man, this takes a lot of work. And now you still have a list of people who probably <laughs> still want that coat that they can come back and buy the code off of you. So it's like a great, just all round, you got content to put out in front of people. You got a business that you can sell this product if they actually are as, you know, go-getter as you are. And at worst case scenario, they're obviously somewhat interested and they probably have a dog or they wouldn't have paid attention to that video in the first place. And so, by the way, I have these if you had a hard time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was kind of my thinking too, because there are certain people for sure that that uh, have the crafty mind, and then they they sit down to it. As you say, they look start looking through the video and go, "Oh my gosh, this is this is too much." But they will also from that, I think, get a whole appreciation of what goes into making that code. You know, there's umpteen layers, and there's piping, and reflective, and Velcro, and like there's just so many things that do go into it. And uh, there's only certain people that have certain personalities that are going to be keen on doing that. People like me that just love doing those kind of things and are really crafty and like to do things for themselves. But yeah, there's going to be a whole other world there that's going to say, no, quite happy to pay for someone to do that. Yeah, I, I could see that as well. I mean, I personally might look at some how-to videos on how to do stuff and then kind of say at the end, like, boy, I think I'd rather just pay somebody to do it, you know, <laughs> like uh, electric worker yeah. in the house. Like, you know, yeah, I, I could figure this out, but boy, I could, I could just hire an electrician too, even though I... I sort of know how to do it. Let's just let's just get the expert in here. So I think you'll get a lot of people that will watch that content on how to do it. And maybe they'll just like your personality or the fact that you are putting so many layers into this and say, all right, this is the person I want to buy my, my dog coats and accessories from. So um, yeah, I think it's a great idea. And, um, and you're going to get a lot of, uh, you're going to get a lot of YouTube content from that too. So I saw, uh, you know, YouTube is very good for how-to stuff. Um, you have a Facebook, you have, you have Instagram. A lot of times people won't watch videos more than five minutes on YouTube and or on, they, they won't watch it on Facebook. That tends to be shorter videos. Um, but just kind of a uh -huh. heads up there, you might want to start the, the YouTube channel to put the more how-to stuff on. Um, anyway. Yeah, so. so are yeah, you... Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Are yeah. you using uh, any content from your customers? Are basically user-generated content. Are you asking for pictures? Or are you? Yeah, yeah, I do ask for pictures from people. People aren't always really great at giving that. You know, you kind of have to ask them a few times. Uh, also, 
they're not always the best pictures, but yeah, I do try to get that as much as I can. And, but I'm definitely, uh, I, I could, I could improve on that for sure. Getting more people to, to send me their, their, uh, pictures of their animals and their dogs and their, their coats and having fun. Yeah. I mean, it's videos, one of, it's, kind of it's definitely one of the underutilized, but most effective forms of marketing, right? It's, it's, still a form of word of mouth because someone's talking about it, but it's all, it's almost like it's morphed together with a testimonial and you don't have to go find a model or a dog in this case model. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, so you have different dogs, different breeds, um, different styles, different personalities of dogs. And now maybe they have that kind of dog, that little Yorkie that's in that picture. And it just, it, it really is great. But again, to your point, it's not always easy because sometimes it's just the way we ask. Sometimes it's, you know, um, a little comment maybe in social, wow, uh, you know, so great. People have been, you know, we love when people are sending in pictures and we're so thankful and, you know, we... We're thankful for you sharing because it makes us aware that we're actually solving a problem. And, you know, please send that. We're so thankful. We'd like to give you this 5%, 6%, 7%, whatever, some sort of coupon and thank you. And, uh, you know, a thank you out to them. Sometimes that maybe massages them into doing a little bit more than, hey, can you give me a picture of your dog? You know, so keep keep playing with uh, that. So do you do that? Would you suggest that uh, through Instagram, like through social media and ask people directly messaging you or directly through your just directly contacting the client themselves? Well, no matter what. um, Okay, so there will be a higher level thought process here and then we'll bring it back to super specific. Um, Everybody's on social media and different people like different platforms more. So to Jesse's point, Mm -hmm. like the how to's. Um, are great for YouTube. Um, Instagram is kind of like what's happening now. Look at my cool life, and I'm over exaggerating on some of this stuff, but you'll get you'll get the general point. Uh-huh. Uh, Pinterest is I aspire for this. Uh, you know, maybe great for where your patterns and um, showing the different textures and the high quality of the the merchandise and stuff. But on each so on each platform, you would possibly communicate this a little more but no matter what you definitely want to be gathering an email list because even though all the people are on these platforms it's kind of rented playground for us right like you can spend a lot of time building up a fan page on facebook and you should but that doesn't guarantee when you post something everyone on that page they've really made this cool creative process where you can build a page and then build an audience but you have to pay to actually get in front of that audience sometimes so it's a little mix of everything right so some of it is just content that's going to go out there but to specifically go back to your question of where and how should I do it uh, I would I would play around in different spots some of it can be an email that just goes out to people who bought and you're basically saying hey um, you're, you're almost now driving a customer that definitely has it back to your social, which is great because in all these platforms, you know, I'm not claiming to know the exact algorithms, but I do know this. They really like if you bring someone from off their platform to their platform, right? It's their playground and you just bought, brought someone from your email list to, to Facebook or to Instagram and now they're putting up a picture and they're tagging you and saying, thank you. You know, our dog loves their new coat. Like you're going to get some serious love, uh, from that platform, whichever that platform is. And so I would, I would recommend, and I'm sure Jesse would somewhat agree and we'll hear what else he has to offer this, but start with current customers on your email list. So then you don't have to worry too much about what that looks like. Am I saying it right? kind of feel out them there and then um it's because it's also a great way to offer a coupon code or something that comes back to your site 
And then you'll be pleasantly surprised when maybe in that email you're saying, um, use this hashtag and, uh, you know, post a picture of your dog and use this hashtag and we'll send you this coupon code or something like that, right? I'm, I'm just pulling right. something out of a hat. But definitely utilize your email list and try to drive them back to the social, but then just offer them that as a thank you. And because um, I'm, I'm sure once someone gets one of these things, they're, they're, they, I think you probably have a good chance for repeat customers as you get more and more SKUs. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah, I, that's great. I love that. Good idea. Yeah, I, I think that's really good. And I, I think I would add to that a little bit more in that. Um, so, yes, an initial email blast is great, but I would show examples of other content you already have. Like, hey, here's a video of, you know, I don't know. What's what's a good dog name? What's your, what's your dog's name, Rich? Lulu. Lulu. Here's Lulu. Uh, playing with this new new coat and you know and then that's on Instagram and then here's a picture of another dog on this platform to give people examples of what you want them to send in because you probably want you know short little snippets of video of the dog jumping around playing and barking and and having a good time in this new um, you know piece of clothing that they have um, so I think that's great and I think I would also go one step further I would automate that process I would probably do this as like a 14 or 21 day follow up. So maybe even a little bit longer. This might be more in the 30 day follow up um, where 30 days after ship or 30 days after purchase, whatever's easier to set up, um, you send this email with, uh, I think, a coupon code for another article is like, yeah, like. Dogs don't need just one coat, right? Like, they, <laughs> you have to have, uh, you know, I need a leather jacket for a night on the town, right? Or, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> you can kind of <laughs> suggest other things that they might want to buy because people love their pets. They love to spend money on their pets. And, but seven days might be too soon. Like, if I just spent a decent amount of money on, on some pet clothing, I'm going to need to let that be paid off on the credit card first before I think about buying another one. But... Maybe in 30 days, uh, I'm feeling feeling good about that, and I might be ready to make another purchase. And if I see other examples of other dogs wearing this, I mean, you know, it's it's great. It's it's dogs. It's pets. People love people love that stuff. So, um, so anyway, yes, social media is right. fine, but I think like email, you can control that so much more um, that that might be a good step for you. Right. Yeah. No, that's great. Good. Good advice. And. We should ask, are you collecting your emails right now? Do you have any uh, an email service provider? I do have an, uh, yep, I do. Yep. Okay. And I am collecting emails. Good. Yeah. That's an easy tip for us then. That's a check mark right there. We got gathering emails. Um, and I think it's easy for you to send emails, right? Because here's a bunch of, here's pictures and videos of dogs to people that have dogs that they already have treated. So it's not it won't be treated as spam so much that other customers, if you're listening out there and you don't sell dog food, dog stuff, eh, you're probably going to get a few more spam warnings, but you know, pet stuff, I think gets through those filters a lot, a lot better. You know, right, yeah. and I noticed that, um, 5% of sales go back to the BC SPCA. Um, I, I definitely yep. would amplify that too. I would take advantage of that. And, almost potentially create a message where you know your you helping your dog is helping other dogs and oh. you know that's i think that's interesting and you could maybe even play with that a little bit as in like your dogs are helping right so there's there's even a potential of tying that into um how how you share right i'm i'm the idea is just coming to me so i'll think it out a little bit and get in contact with you more but almost more awesome. like the social media side of it like oh hey um you know if 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 lulu's post gets to a certain number you know we're gonna donate five jackets to shelter or whatever you know some something where you're right. just really amplifying the the giving back you know having value and giving back to the world right now is is definitely um especially on some of the younger generation actually it's it's really big 
you know, percentages back to helping out. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm gonna now. I'm kind of you're giving me some other ideas, Rich. So yeah, that's I, the way this podcast yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we didn't, we didn't yeah. have notes on this prior, you know. Um, but I'm thinking you can almost gamify this a little bit more, where each one of these contacts, you know, means extra points, right? And what's what's the app? I'm gonna, I'm trying to look it up here. King Sumo. Um, There's a few. No, the one that's already integrated here. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh. we. So we have an app that already is already. And he's he's been on the podcast, so I'm trying to think <laughs> of what the po- what it is right now. I will find it while I'll, we're. I'll going. get it. Yeah, but the, the the basic idea is this: is like, hey, if you like us on Instagram, you get five points, and and follow us on Facebook, you get five points. If you send in a video of your dog, you get twenty five points, and you, you know, like, and then kind of go down the list of all these various online things that you can do. Uh, and they all result in points, and maybe then once a month or once a quarter, you can have a winner, right? And that winner gets a free free jacket or maybe something a little lower cost too, like if, you know, let's not break the bank here, but maybe a, something a little easier to handle. Um, I, I think that might be a way for you to, keep, you know, stay in front of your customers with, you know, fresh content that they probably enjoy. We're helping pets here. Um, yeah. You know, you could also maybe at a certain point at the end of the year or something like you do the, um, you know, it's a little, there's be a little tough to do cause you're going to feel a little rough with it. But like, you know, like you give the check to the, 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 the pound or the, the shelter, like, Hey, here's the check. It's a thousand dollars. Thanks for all our customers for your help. And this is, this is what this thousand dollars will do. You know, I, I think, um, um, you, you know, like that it's a, legitimate email to send and that's yeah that, that's one of the yeah. reasons you're doing this so awesome I yeah. love those ideas yeah that's i wish great. i had yeah. a, i wish i had a better um you know social good that i could i could send these emails uh, <laughs> so you know i'm happy for you <laughs> was it the uh gratis faction huh? gratis faction i think yes gratis faction yeah. yeah so uh so jill check out the app gratis faction in the uh app market and See if that fits your needs. I, I think that's the that's the one we're talking cool. about here. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Yeah, and I and that's a plugin for Equid. It's a plugin for Equid, and I think it allows you to plug in all these different social platforms that you can get various points for for doing all these activities that we mentioned. Oh yeah, and there's way more oh. than we even mentioned too. You can do it for Pinterest. There's sweepstakes. There's contests. There's loyalty points. Yeah, the contest. I can see a lot stuff. of contests because, yeah, and Jill, you mentioned. Yeah, you're asking for the pictures. You're probably not, you're getting some, not that many. Let's say you're getting like 5% of the people are sending a photo or something. If you make it into a contest or a sweepstakes with some freebies, you might get like 30, 50% of the people sending in pictures. Like it's, all they have to do is snap a picture or a video of their dog. So it's, it's not that hard. And they're yeah. probably at the yeah. dog park looking at their There's phone something anyway. about gamifying it. Yeah, I, I really, I really like it. gamifying people just love absolutely it's gamifying and it's dogs and you know usually when people go to the park and let their dog run around they usually pick up their phone and start reading their email so it's a good time or look at social it's a good you know all they have to do is use their thumb and take that video and enter the sweepstakes so right yeah, yeah. awesome i'm liking that one um love it yeah now on you mentioned on Facebook and Instagram that you have, did you sync the product catalog so you can do the shoppable posts inside of uh, Facebook and Instagram? I did, yeah, yeah, which was so easy. I loved it. I'm, okay. I, I say I'm technical, but I'm really not that technical. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm really come from the design side of things, so when things are like a one-button push and it happens, it's it's phenomenal. Love it. Yeah, and actually that's, that's a great point because um, – you are both inspirational for people and, and, and say aspirational too, because they say, oh, well, this is how good yours can look, but you're also pointing out and thank you. We appreciate always that you don't have to be a designer to do this. A lot of these functions in Equid are literally um, one, two, three clicks in this particular case, I think the longest part of the process is just waiting for the approval <laughs> from yeah. being able to, you know, Instagram saying or Facebook saying, yeah, you can you can sell now. Um, so that's that's nice. And thanks for pointing that out. That that is 
really easy for people to do. Create those shoppable posts. Just get your get your uh, product feed in there, a uh, few clicks, and just wait a day or two, and you're selling online with shoppable posts. Yeah, and it's it's everywhere. It seems. Um, I can't remember. I think I actually had to manually. I don't. Do you have a plugin for Google? I think I manually put it up on Google. Yeah, Google. You have to do a little more. Um, yeah, to get your you yeah, get a product way, yeah. feed inside of Equid, and then you you upload it there, and and that can be scheduled. You know, there's a couple steps to get it done the first time, but once you get that done, that's that's pretty automatic. So, um, and by the way, it's a little harder on the YouTube side, but it's very doable. I I know you'll I know you can get through this, uh, but if you do YouTube videos, you um, it's called True View for shopping, uh, I believe. That way you can sync your product catalog into that video. So if you're talking about a very specific um, coat that you're making, that you can sync that uh, product into your YouTube video. I'm, I'm oh. missing a word or two there, and, and like there's a few more steps, but it is is very doable. Um, the Facebook one's a little bit easier, I will I will admit, but but anyway, it's it's also available. And again, is that a is that a, a, a Equid plugin? It's not a plugin. It's but, true view. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but you'll use. It, go ahead. Is it part of YouTube itself? Yeah, it's actually. So the steps would be: you definitely need Equid for the product feed. So uh, in Equid, kind of the same area, you'll you'll find where you can create a product feed for Google, and then that in Google you'll go to Google Merchant Center, uh, and that's where they want all the the product feeds to go. And then that will feed both. Uh, Google Ads, if you want to do Google Shopping Ads, and it'll also feed the true view for shopping on YouTube, which is not a very widely used feature, by the way. So it's that's why it's a little harder. It's a little more, we'll call that a little more 301 level. Um, but I, I think you can handle it, so that's why I mentioned it. I, if you're, <laughs> all right, if you're oh, listening and you're like, I, I don't know, that sounds like too much. Okay, maybe that's save that for later. But, um, but, Jill, I, I have faith in you. All sounds right. great. <laughs> Perfect. A um, couple other ideas. Rich had mentioned Pinterest. If you're already taking pictures, especially on the how-to side, I think Pinterest would be good for you. They also have the shoppable posts there as well. Again, there's a little bit of, you know, you got to get the feed going and, and upload it. It's not that hard, but there is an, an extra step there. Um, but I All think right. that might be good for you. Um, and then, you know, in the in the pet world, there's a lot of, you know, in the influencers side here, like, you know, if the right person buys, um, you know, the coat for their dog and posts it on on Instagram and they have a million followers and, and whatnot, like, there's a potential that it could blow up. I don't know who the right person would be for you, to be honest with you, but um, actually there's dogs that are influencers now. Like, it's, uh, y you know. <laughs> Probably Ellen. Ellen. Yeah. Ellen would be awesome. Oh, I'm yeah. going with Ellen. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's a perfect example. That the, it's it's like we talked this out on what we we're going to talk about next. <laughs> um, but I, I, like giving this to a celebrity, and like, oh my gosh, your dog is so cute, you know, and and almost going out of your way in those scenarios to not ask for something back actually seems to work better. You know, I'm, I'm sure there's always exceptions to the rule and someone asked to, but if you just were giving for giving's sake, especially the fact that, you know, you're actually giving percentage of this money to help other dogs too, um, just, hey, Ellen, here's, you know, here here's a coat. I tried my hardest to guess the exact dimensions of your dog because I can only see it in these. I've looked at a few pictures you've posted online if this doesn't fit, let me know the exact size and I'll get you another one. Like that literally would be priceless. You know better than I do. Like if could you imagine Ellen going on her show and saying, look at this cute little coat that this lady sent me. And you don't even have to ask. Like, of course, she understands this giving first and making people feel good. How, and how that works, her show, her whole show is based on that. So, um, you know, I would, I would definitely try something like that with some form of celebrity that you literally just give them it, and then you just in the narrative of, hey, these are all custom made. So if it doesn't fit, you know, and how much time does that take you, and what is the 
maybe taking away two hundred dollars total in sales if you give them two, you know, and you'll potentially get something back that's priceless. But no matter what, there's no way, in my opinion, and I think you could actually hold me to this. I'll I'll pay the difference. Like you won't be able to give this to a celebrity and not somewhere down the road quadruple or potentially just like not even be able to measure how much return you would get. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. High risk, high reward on that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I think if you no, pick that's your, low risk, that's uh, just, what, what's the, what, what's the, the high risk of a two, couple products, right? Yeah. That's the risk. I mean, that's, you know, that's and low time. risk, high reward. Yeah. Agree to disagree, Rich. I'll, I'll give you that one. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay the difference. Okay. Like it is low risk. This is a couple hundred dollars potential sales. Jill, we're going to make some bets on your business over here. So if you don't mind, we're... I'll, I'll let you guys know how it goes. All right. <laughs> yeah, if you're on Ellen, um, maybe you get to invite one of us to. Yeah, you invite Rich because I, yeah. I poo pooed it. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll play it. I'll, I'll point it back to you guys and say, this is where it all came from. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. So yeah, I hope we were able to give you a couple ideas uh, that you know that you could try in your business next. I can tell you're already on the right path here. Like you've already done the right things to get going. Um, but is there anything we we should have asked about that we didn't? Uh, I don't think so. I think you guys touched on most of the stuff. All right, and where can people go to find out more about you in the store? Scouterware.com which uh, is a play on my dog's name, Scout, and also the word out as an outer wear. Um, so scouterwear.com. And also, as I said, we'll be by the end of February, we're going to have scouterwearclub.com, which is where people can get discounts. Um, I was planning on doing that kind of gamify thing, which um, I love your, your, that plugin because that'll just make it that much easier. Yeah. Um, but thinking of adding that kind of uh, scouterwear pop points is what I was going to call them and uh, have people being able to build up uh, the more they buy, the more they get uh, kind of thing. But also discounts on um, products, sending out products, um, packaging. I'm also going to package up the, all the supplies needed in order to make a coat. So um, all of that will be coming. So yes, scouterware.com is the main site. And uh, yeah, and I'd love to offer a, a coupon for any of the listeners that are that are interested in signing up. Do you so, have the uh, yeah? Do you have the code ready that we can make I sure it makes do. it? I do. All right. Yeah, it's uh, join Scouterware Club, all one word. So if they put that in when they sign up, um, I haven't got the sign up yet on the Scouterware page, but I will have a have that avenue once I'm ready to go, and uh, they can sign with sign up with the Join Scouterware Club. Well, you'll have a week or two before this airs, so <laughs> get, get yeah, on perfect. it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Little little <laughs> podcast secret. This won't be live for about another week or so, so you have time. Uh, but for people listening, you can we can check it out and see if that's ready. So scouterware.com. Yeah, well, we'll have it done. Oh, I'll have it done by the end of the day anyways. But, and, uh, and if you watch Ellen, you're eventually going to see Jill on there, so just look <laughs> for Jill on Ellen. Um, and then if we... If, if you really put in gratisfaction, maybe we can do a, a round two in like six months of, you know, here's what gratisfaction did for your business. So I don't know, just a yeah. little teaser of, well. of round two. But, um, but yeah, um, so Rich, any, any last thoughts here before we sign off? No, this is great. Again, always happy to get uh, merchants on uh, right now. Like to come up for this podcast, Jill. Actually, I I missed my daughter's little publishing party. Luckily, my wife filmed it, but it was a book that she wrote all about dogs, and she loves her dog. So I'll be sure to get her that coupon code, and she'll definitely make a video for you. So hopefully, she. Oh, can... that would be awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, that sounds good. Perfect. Well, Jill, really appreciate you being on the show. Um, hope for all the listeners out there, you're able to gather some knowledge here. And, uh, you know, doggy clothes, doggy coats, scouterwear.com. If you're listening out there, get out there and make it happen.
Hey, this is Jesse and Rich. We want to let you know we really appreciate you listening. We hope you find the tips we give you helpful for growing your business. You can find all of our past episodes and a lot more useful stuff at equi.com forward slash podcast. And also, check us out on your favorite podcasting platform like Apple Podcast or Stitcher. And make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing. Be sure to let us know what you think by rating and reviewing so we can serve you better. So subscribe on your favorite platform. And come join our community, check out the transcripts, or tell us why you would be a great guest at equid.com forward slash podcast.